Hey all, Josh Wingrove here from Pursue Wealth. Today I'm going to discuss a topic we are all interested in, and that is travelling. But today I'm going to include the finance side with the travelling. So I'm going to give you a few hot tips on what's best to do and kind of what really is not to do, and I suppose your options that are available. Uh, so we all see this so often. You know, you book your flight, your accommodation sorted, your passport's all done, your transfers are all sorted, you know, you've got everything on the trip really ready to go, but then, you know, you haven't really considered your options with the finances and the local currency. So, you know, what are your options? You know, the, the key things really to look for are the exchange rate to and from the currency. Quite often, the actual exchange rate and what you'll get when you convert the money is different, so try to keep them pretty similar because quite often they'll have a little bit of a commission there. So if you try to keep them close, then you're going to get more bang for your buck. The initial and the ongoing fees. So when you initially put money onto a car, and I suppose you could be charged a fee, and when ongoing, you could be charged a fee. So if you go overseas, you come back, you forget to actually take the money out, ongoing, you're going to have this fee, and it's going to eat away at all your money there. Uh, the fraud and the security protection. So if you lose, say, a card or the check, you know, what are the options there? Make sure no one else can use it. And then having a backup plan. So if you lose a card uh, or if it gets stolen, you know, do you have any funds that are available to use elsewhere? Because you don't want to be stuck overseas with no money. So it really depends on what country you're going to because uh, each country is different and you're going to have better options, you know, using, I suppose, different funds in each country. So there really are five ways to set up your finances before heading overseas. So the first one is getting a prepaid travel card. This is where you get money, your money and you put it onto a card, you upload those funds and you're fixing that conversion rate. So you know that's a pretty good option if you're not too sure what's going to happen with the currency. The next one is the travel uh, debit card. So it's where you put funds into an account, the conversion's not fixed, could fluctuate, but then you use that card as in like a normal everyday debit card. You tap away, you take money out, etc. Uh, there's a travel credit card, so you apply to get a credit, you charge obviously an interest, it's very similar to a credit card over here, you can use that, it's quite good if you, know, you don't have certain funds, but obviously you're going to be charged the interest, and when you go back from holiday, you're going to have to repay it. Uh, the traveller's checks uh, used to be used all the time, it's just basically, basically a check you use when you're overseas, you can cash that in, um, and then you just use the, you know, the funds really. Uh, and then there's the cash or the foreign exchange. So where you go to an ATM, take the funds out, and then you use that to buy things, or you go to the foreign exchange vendor. So you just gotta be careful really with the exchange right there. Um, so look, what I'd be thinking is using like the travel debit card. You put the funds onto it, you know, you can use that, you've got a pin, you can tap away, you're using your own funds, you're not charging interest. Um, there are quite a few different banks that offer really good rates and they kind of don't charge a huge fee. So, uh, you know, like anything, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask us. Happy to help you out. Thanks, guys. Cheers.